In the Warner Mountains, near Adel, Oregon, a sea of sagebrush extends as far as the eye can see. This vast landscape supports ranchers, recreationists, and rural communities. It also supports wildlife. In fact, more than 350 species depend on the sagebrush ecosystem, including pronghorn, mule deer, and the iconic sage grouse. But after a century of fire suppression, trees like the western juniper have spread from the rocky ridges of the Warner Mountains down into the sagebrush sea. In just the past 20 years, more than one million acres of sagebrush have been lost to tree encroachment in the Great Basin. This invasion of trees has been happening for decades all over the world. The science shows that this expansion of trees impacts the health and resilience of rangelands, putting wildlife at risk. By juniper expanding its range, it has impacted a lot of those wildlife species that, that thrive on open sagebrush areas. So it essentially is habitat destruction for them. This spread of junipers also impacts the people who live on the land. As stands of trees become thicker, they siphon precious water from streams. They fuel hotter and more severe wildfires, and they replace native plants that livestock feed on. The juniper was closing in, and I was just kind of watching my ranch slowly disappear before my eyes as the juniper got worse and worse. Beginning in 2010, private landowners like John O'Keefe teamed up with the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service, the Bureau of Land Management, and other state and local partners to reclaim disappearing sagebrush range. Over the next decade, partners worked together to restore 53 square miles of sagebrush country across property boundaries in the Warner Mountains. Leaving the old growth woodlands alone, partners focused their restoration on recently invaded areas that still contained sagebrush and other native plants. Using chainsaws, they removed young trees from historic rangeland, allowing native plants to rebound quickly. Here in the Warner Mountains project, we're talking from horizon to horizon restoration, which is what we need to actually get to in terms of conservation of the sagebrush sea. The partners closely monitored the outcomes of tree removal. They paid special attention to how sage grouse populations fared. They're really an early indicator of how things are going. So goes the sage grouse, so goes the sagebrush sea. And we really wanted to use that as a barometer of how well our restoration actions were working. When the Warner project began, no one knew exactly how tree removal would change things. To find answers, Scientists from the BLM, NRCS, University of Idaho, and Oregon State University monitored plant and animal species in the area. They also tracked over 400 sage grouse hens over eight years. So once we began cutting trees on the landscape, birds' behavior would change where we would see nesting in areas where we hadn't seen nesting before. What really surprised us is how fast the sage grouse reoccupied those former habitats. Um, they started nesting there almost immediately. Within three years, scientists documented a third of marked sage grouse nested in restored sagebrush habitat. In addition, nest success increased by 19% once trees were cut. As a result, the sage grouse population in the restored areas grew at a rate that was 12% higher than those in neighboring areas with trees. This is extremely encouraging for the future of sage-grouse conservation. The amount of high-quality sage-grouse habitat increased six-fold after juniper removal. Other wildlife benefited too. For example, researchers found that the abundance of sagebrush songbirds doubled soon after tree removal. And now, ranchers are breathing easier too, with more space and better forage for their grazing cattle. I really felt like I was getting my ranch back once we really got into doing it at a landscape scale. Successful restoration projects at this scale are only possible through partnerships. The main advice I would have is don't be afraid to jump in with both feet. Uh, talk to all your partners, 
you, there's other people out there in your community, other agencies that will help you um, bring everybody to the table, talk about what you want to do, talk about your overall broad concept, and it will come together. But don't be afraid to move forward and try something because it is possible. Indeed, the resounding success in the Warner Mountains is being replicated in other watersheds across the Sagebrush Sea as partners come together to tackle the problem of tree invasion and achieve similar outcomes. Since 2010, NRCS Working Lands for Wildlife has partnered with over 2,000 landowners in communities across the West to remove encroaching trees from 700,000 acres of rangelands. By working together, we can create healthy, resilient working lands that support people and wildlife for generations to come.